How's everybody doing? Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chad C. No Roper, the director of the 889 Amplifier program. And today I have some amazing, some amazing guests. Um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and I think it's imperative that everyone takes their mental health seriously. So this month, instead of discussing the musical topics that I normally discuss, I brought in some mental health experts uh, so that we can help our community. Um, it's a stigma in the communities of color to shy away from mental health and mental health issues. I know growing up, they used to say, pray it away or take it to Jesus. And you can do all that, but you still need to talk to somebody. So today I brought some esteemed guests. Um, and I'm going to go one by one just so you get to know who they are and what they do. And then we're going to dive right into the topics that I have uh, for today. So thank you so much for joining us. If you have questions and you want to say something, you got a question you want to send in to us, um, you can send it in at uh, 414-892-8899. 414-892-8899. So let's start this thing off with an esteemed guest, number one, Miss Hubbard. Talk to us about yourself, Ms. Hubbard. Who are you, where are you from, and what do you do? Good evening, thanks for having me. Again, I'm Lauren Hubbard. I am a Milwaukee County resident, born and raised on the north side. Okay. Um, I'm a Chapter 220 alumni. Okay. Shout out to Whitefish Bay, um, where I completed my education. Um, and from there, I am also an alumni of Prairie View A&M University. Okay. I attended a historically black college where I got my bachelor's degree in nursing. Um, and I came back home to Milwaukee to serve my community and be able to provide care to people here who have been able to uplift me and help move me forward. Um, since that time, I am a registered nurse and I've been working for Milwaukee County for almost 10 years okay. um, in several different roles, providing behavioral health care at Behavioral Health Services. Currently, I'm serving as the Director of Community Crisis Services, where I oversee the different mobile teams and crisis line services that the county provides to residents, both adults and youth, um, and working also really closely with our team members, partners, stakeholders, and people that I just know um, in my personal life to be able to do more engagement with the community, have conversations, reduce stigma, and especially for what I'm able to do, um, take my part in being able to change the system That's and being beautiful. able to access services for community members and people who may not have traditionally been a part of services and seeking care. That's beautiful. Now, you said you've been doing this for 10 years, but you look like you're 17. So I, don't, I need to know what the secret <laughs> is because I'm up here looking 68 years old and I'm in my 40s. So whatever you're taking, email me what it is mm. so that I can uh, get it in my life because you said 10 years. I'm like, 10 years? That's what I like to hear, man. Thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Hubbard. I Thank appreciate you. you. Next, we got up, got up next, we have Dr. Leah Knox. Talk to us about yourself, Dr. Knox. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Leah Knox, also a graduate of the Chapter 220 program. Shout out to Audubon Middle School, also a graduate of Riverside University High School, um, Jackson State University. So HBCU graduate as well, so my sis up here. Um, came back home to Concordia um, University, so I am a lover and an advocate of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, then went to Auburn University to earn my um, PhD in psychology. I am the founder and CEO of Knox Behavioral Health Solutions, where I offer mental wellness um, consultation as well as workshops and trainings for corporations and businesses and communities throughout the United States, and also a co-founder of Black Space that offers mental wellness to black and brown communities, women, men, and the LGBTQIA communities. So I absolutely love what I do. Grew up in Hillside, Lapham Park, Lisbon Square, 22nd and Center, and 26th and Galena. Shout outs to them all. <laughs> Thank you so much. I went to King, by the way. Generals in the house. Generals in the house. <laughs> Next, we have a sister that I've known since we were in high school. And, and, and she's a doctor, a double doctor, by the way. Not just a doctor, a double doctor. Now, you know how, you know how much money it costs to be a double doctor? Ooh, I'm still paying those loans. See what I'm saying? <laughs> it's an expensive thing to be a double doctor. That's why I'm not even a doctor. You understand what I'm saying? Talk to us, Dr. Jones. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Chad. Um, I, uh, my name is Dr. Jones, and I am the CEO and owner of Amri Counseling Services. We provide uh, mental health and substance abuse treatment. Um, we work with children, adolescents, adults, couples, and families. Um, I guess since we're shouting out our high schools and where we're from, born and raised Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Tech House. Okay, Tech House. And uh, I won't go back to middle school and all of that, right? Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take me back a little far. But um, definitely born and ra was raised on 7th and Burleitis for 20-something years of my life before I went off to, um, to college. But I went to college at the University of Wisconsin, Whitewater, went on to Springfield College, Capella University, and then USC. Um, so you talk about double doctorate, still paying those loans back. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I had a, a huge love for mental health and um, saw how mental health was affecting my community from growing up even to now, and that's what really drove me to the field. I'm also a licensed psychotherapist and clinical substance abuse counselor. We have about 35 providers at the clinic that provides services, not only in um, at the clinic, but also via telehealth, and we also go into the homes and to the community as well. So I'm just really, really humble and thankful to be here and, and just appreciate you having us. Uh, thank you so much for coming, man. I've known this young sister, because we are young yeah, in our age, uh, since, since we, I think we probably were 15 or 16 back in the day, hanging out, going to parties and stuff. Yeah. Now she's a doctor, and I just do music. Look at God. He can change your life if you allow him to. Yeah, now. <laughs> I like to say that my party be sitting at home watching the NBA. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm trying to. I'm gonna go. I be sleep by 8:30. You hear me with this thing in at 7:30. It's 8:30. I'm gone. Next we have up an esteemed gentleman that I've been knowing since he was a youngster, which means I'm a little bit older than him, not by much. He got gray hair too. Y'all just can't see it because he got that fresh haircut. But this brother man is, is uh, has has so many talents and. I know him on the music side of things and on the video side of things, but this brother has a passion for his people, and I just want to thank him so much for helping me put this thing together with these amazing, amazing guests that we have today, none other than my brother, Montreal Kane. Thank you, good brother. Thank you. I wish there was a DJ in the room to go. Buh, 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 buh. <laughs> we got more degrees than a thermometer up here right now. Uh, Montreal came, born and raised right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, I am just a lover of life, and I'm going to go all the way back. 81st Street Elementary. Found out we just went to Audubon together. Yeah. Got to have those Trojans tech house in the building. And, of course, those wolves over at Cardinal Stritch. Um, I hold a master's in counseling. I've been teaching for 13 years and retired last year. So I spent my first nine years teaching anything you could think of, photography, graphic design, animation, music, uh, audio production and engineering at UWM in the last four years teaching broadcast technology at Marshall. Uh, but I'm here today because in 2018, I decided to take a stand for my community and I became a health tech startup founder. I built an app called the Mirror app, which allows an Apple Watch to reach your heart rate and understand what are those vital signs? How are you feeling? Where are your emotions? We have mental health professionals that are available to just do a wellness check-in, see how you're doing, is everything okay? And then we make recommendations like the attitude adjustment playlist where you can catch a vibe and and lower depression, anxiety, and your heart rate with evidence-based research backed by science. But if that's not enough, we can get anywhere in Milwaukee County and come into a city near you and allowing mental health professionals to get to you in 30 minutes. I'm Montreal, and it's a privilege to be here. Man, thank you so much for that introduction. This brother has came a long way. I remember him as a youngster, like middle school youngster, and it's the things that he has done in his life. I think it's amazing. Again, if you have questions, I know some of, us, some of you are watching us, a lot of you are watching us on Facebook uh, Live. You can uh, send your questions to, text your questions to, I didn't say that before. So text your questions to 414-892-8899. All right? So let's dive right in. My first question to every single one of you, because I, I want to get each one of you guys' take, because each one of you are an expert in a different area. That's why I have four of you up here. So my question is, how does social media affect your mental health? We're going to start from here and work our way down. Then the next question, we're going to start down there and work our way back. Okay, I'm going first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive in on the surface level. I'm gonna let these good doctors follow up. But no, I would say seriously, um, regardless of what age you are, social media, if you are engaging in it, absolutely impacts how we interpret the world um, and how we might compare ourselves to what we're interpreting, whether it's realistic or not. Every individual has a different level of understanding of what's real yes. um, and what is being portrayed for marketing, publicity, or whatever else that might be. Um, so I, social media absolutely has an impact on our mental health. 
current state, there are lots of things that may be unrealistic to achieve uh, for the average individual or things, again, that we may not be able to, um, to really work towards um, in our everyday lives. So I think that it's important to have conversations, especially with our children, mm -hmm. as they are being um, immersed in different social media outlets um, and how it's finding its way into the school curriculums and different ways that we just have real conversations with our, chi our children um, to be able to recognize how they can process what's real, what isn't, and how they can work to cope um, with what their reality is and be able to make steps to work towards what they would like to see in their lives. Absolutely. I always tell people social media is when you look on social media, you can't compare yourself because what you're doing is comparing yourself with your real life and someone people's highlight because they're not going to show you the negative or right. the, the downside of their life. They're just going to show you the positive. Oh, we on a boat, you know, but they didn't pay for the boat. You know what I'm saying? We had no boo, but they're not paying the bill. You know, things like that. They're showing you the highlight, but the highlight is not even a real light of what's going on in their life. So I, I really want to touch on this first because there are so many young individuals um, out here comparing themselves to the Kardashians and the, the, the entertainers and all that type of stuff. And you, even they have issues. I don't care how much money you got. Money don't solve heartache. That's one thing money don't do. So Dr. Knox, talk to me about how does social media affect your mental health? So social media can affect our mental health both positively and negatively. And we can start with the negatively first. When we, once again, um, with negatively, when we compare ourselves to other negatively, um, we can look at someone and say, oh my God, they have so much money. They are so beautiful. We're comparing ourselves to that person via social media. But every single button we push, every single um, filter that we put on our bodies, every single saying or statement that we put out there, we have planned. We have constructed, we have painted that picture for the masses. So with that, now we are comparing ourselves to someone, something, or some situation in a manner that is constructed for the public viewing. So negatively, now we're feeling some type of way because we're comparing ourselves to a picture. Someone painted someone for us to see that puts us in a better light. So if I look a certain way, act a certain way, behave a certain way, have these things, it's a picture. So now I'm comparing myself to that person and it may not even be true. It may not even be fact. Now I am feeling less than. Now I am feeling a bit more sad, a bit more depressed, a bit more, I wish I had what they had. Positively, social media can affect us by looking at positive quotes. We can look at someone and say, wow, they actually came out of a struggle and they talked about it on social media. So now I think I can do that too. They actually received a resource or a grant or they received something that I would like too. And they actually talked about step by step how they did that through social media. So let me hit them up and see if they'd help. And guess what? They actually answered me back. So with that, social media can affect all of us positively and negatively and affect our mental health in both ways. Now, what is there a medical term or a professional term for something like a social media affecting you or it's, it's consistent with just life, uh, whatever the term is for like regular life affecting you? It's absolutely consistent with regular life affecting us. However, now we have technology. And so with technology affecting us, it's a part, social media is a part of our regular life now, but it's a part of, let's say if we have a depressive symptom because of what we are now exposing mm -hmm. ourselves to. Right. So we expose ourselves to alcohol, we expose ourselves to drugs, we expose ourselves to sex, but now it's excessive. Mm -hmm. We've entered now into, now we expose ourselves to social media a bit more than what we should. Mm -hmm. And we are focusing on it more. When we are excessive, it, interrupts our functioning mm -hmm. of daily activities and it now is interrupting it so now we're not functioning regularly Absolutely. that's a part of our daily lives mm -hmm. so that could cause depression it can cause anxiety symptoms so on and so forth so there's not necessarily a special name for it it just interrupts anxiety depression so on and so forth is in a part of that category absolutely thank you so much dr jones Talk to me yeah. in your professional opinion. Even since you said you do like marriage counseling, all these different things, mm -hmm. how does social media affect those type of maybe patients that you may see? 
or yeah, clients, um, I should say. I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of what you mentioned, and that was um, the anxiety and depression that we're seeing mostly around social media. When we post on social media, it's a reason why we're posting, mm -hmm. right? And, and many times, even if we're not honest about it with mm -hmm. ourselves, we're looking for the like, the love, the heart, right? We're looking for the comment. We're looking for something. Most people don't post on social media for you know no reason, right? There's a reason why you're posting, whether that's marketing or um, to provide information. But many times, people are looking for some kind of response. Yes. What we're finding is a lot of people are looking for that void through social media. So when you talk about couples, you talk about you know individuals, there's something that we're looking for through social media, right? And that is what's really been impacting our functioning mm -hmm. and our mental health. So when you don't get that like, what you start feeling a little down, maybe this is, isn't the best picture of me, so now I wanna post a different picture, mm -hmm. right? I wanna crop it so that we crop out what's in the background because I really don't want you to see how, what my house looks like or, you know, um, and all these filters, we make them lighter, we make them darker. Um, you know, all of these things have been impacting our mental health. I like when Dr. Knox mentioned about the positive and the negative side of it, because there's huge, there's a lot of positives about social media, but it really is and really depends on how we use social media in each person, right? So, um, you know, I just want to urge people to be careful about what they allow, right? Because there's something called block, meaning you can like, you can block people. You can, you have a choice on the type of circle that, that you are around, and that's even in your social media. If there's something negative that's coming across your news feed, block it, block them, so you don't see it. Because the reality is, is when we're reading those things on social media, we think that it's not affecting us, but every single time you read a post, whether it's negative or positive, it's affecting you in some way. So the, you had asked about the couples, I don't want to ignore that question, but you asked about couples. A lot of times when we deal with, um, in our marriages or in our relationships, the things that we look for from our partner is that love, that companionship, right? Conversation, connection. What social media has done is kind of taken that away a little bit. And it's impacted many couples because now the things that we usually look for in our, in our mate or in our couple or in our, um, in our husbands or our wives, now we're getting many of that attention, much of that attention right on social media, right? You're getting the inboxes. We know you get those, right? <laughs> like you're getting the inboxes. You're getting people say how beautiful you are or how, you know, how masculine you look or whatever the case may be. And we now don't really look for that in our mate. And we get that through social media, right? When those things stop, you don't get that attention as you, as maybe as much as you used to, then that start, uh, starts to affect how you feel. So just really being careful about how we use social media, what we expect from it, and then having some control, because you do have control on, on, of, of your social media and what you allow and don't allow. Man, that's, that, was, that was good. Montreal, I know you deal with uh, young people. So talk to us. Uh, in, in the area of dealing with young people, what social what you notice social media to be doing to young people? Absolutely. There's a song by Sounds of Blackness that says, be optimistic. Um, when we think about the different diverse gumbo that we received up here, I'm going to give you a different side. It's community. For a lot of people, it's a place for them to express themselves, especially for young people, uh, finding social clubs and groups uh, and just being able to, you know, have a voice, have a platform. I don't like how this made me feel. Why would they do that uh, to that person? Uh, where's the next protest going to be? It's a tool that has allowed young people to really find community, uh, whether you're using a platform where you don't have to show your face at all. Uh, Clubhouse, right? right. There's a, a group on Clubhouse I attend every Thursday called Mendable, and it's just for men. And they get on the platform and they talk about how they're feeling. And it's like the coolest thing in the world. It's moderated by a young lady. And these guys share the type of things that you would never hear a masculine, quote unquote, masculine man say out loud, right? And so for young people, it just allows them a, a way to express themselves. You know, I work with a lot of uh, youth servant organizations like uh, Northcott, Running Rebels, MKE Fellows. The first thing that we teach them is, hey, you may not want to have an email address that says littlebodysnatcher.com. That may not go over well for your brand, right? Right. But if you, if, if your, you know, your hashtag is super dope photographer, 
that's already expressing something positively about yourself. It's giving you a chance to, you know, allow me to reintroduce myself. That is what social media can be for young people. And it also gives them an opportunity to advertise, sell commerce, you know, and get into a space in which obviously there are those places where you got to be careful. Stranger danger is a real thing. Being able to block, being able to limit some of those access. But for other folks, it might be the only social connection they had during a two-year pandemic. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, man. Um, also, um, being that I'm in the in music industry, uh, a lot of times artists, and this is this is huge to me because artists a lot of times um, compare themselves or where they are in their career. And in, in I, I like to say in the music industry, that there are a lot of high highs and a lot of low lows. So when when you're in a high high spot, social media is a good place to be. But when you're in that rock bottom area, whether you're a producer, a writer, an artist, a manager, or executive, whatever, that's the worst place to be is on social media. That's when you need to take your break because now what you're doing is you already feeling bad from what whatever didn't go right. Your project didn't sell, what you thought it was going to do. People didn't come to your concert. Whatever, the, the song you thought was going to be placed on somebody's album didn't make it. So now you're comparing yourself and then boom, first thing on your timeline, you're a songwriter, you thought you had a song placed. The biggest, the dream pop up, Rico Love pop up, the biggest of the world, and you now you compare yourself to them. Mind you, they've been doing this 15 years before you started now, so you can't compare yourself to somebody. That's like us taking me in Montreal racing. I take off running, and at 6:45 he start. I'm probably gonna make it to Capital Drive faster than you, dog. You know what I'm saying? So. At the end of the day, you got to run your own race. So don't allow social media to make you try to run someone else's race. Because there was a story when I was coming up called the hare and the tortoise. And how the, how the hare was just running so fast and doing all this and uh, making fun of the, the, the tortoise. And at the end of the race, because the tortoise took his time and went directly to where he was supposed to go, he got there before the the hair did even though the hair was quote unquote faster so i explained to a lot of artists musicians uh, producers managers that when you feel like you're being held back begin to look at yourself as an arrow when you shoot a bow and arrow the further back you pull it the further it travels which means it gives you an opportunity to prepare for the for the propelling that whoever the, the creator, God, the universe, whatever you, Allah, whatever you look, whatever you serve or, 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 or acknowledge shoots you forward. So you have to prepare yourself because the worst thing to do is to want something. You want to be the biggest producer. You want to be the biggest artist. You want to be the biggest songwriter. You get the opportunity and you fumble the ball at the goal line because you wasn't preparing to get there. So listen to what these individuals up here and myself are saying is because what we're trying to do is give you some games, drop some gems on you so that whether you're a writer, whether you're trying to be an aspiring doctor, whether you're trying to be the head of the community centers with all of the other things and whatnot, or you're trying to be a, a, a just a, a little old producer or somebody like myself trying to help the community, make sure that you're running your way race because at the end of the day, it's all about an individual's race. You comparing, you, you're competing with yourself. Right? So talk to me, Dr. Knox, if you don't mind, my sister. Talk to me of some signs of depression. I'm a songwriter, I'm a producer, I'm an artist, I'm a manager. Things aren't going right. Give me some signs that I can feel like there's some depression setting in. Yes, sir. So there are several signs of depression, and I can go on all day, but I will try to keep it short. So we can start with the emotional or mental signs of depression. I'm not feeling motivation. I just feel like, man, I can't get out of bed. I can't get this right. I can't think about this. I'm trying to write this song. I'm trying to get these keys right. I, I, I can't think of it right now. And not that I've been working all night or anything like that. I just can't get right. And I've been at this for one, two weeks. Um, I'm feeling really listless, lazy, like just, ooh, I don't have the energy. Um, I have things in my head that I'm thinking about over and over again, and they're just making me really sad. Sometimes I'm just sitting here, and I'm driving in my car, and all of a sudden, my tears feel like they're about to pop into the dashboard. I feel like I'm about to do an ugly lifetime cry. I'm just sitting here, and I'm just chilling. All of a sudden, I'm like, Ooh, face ugly, about to cry for no reason at all. Um, I'm feeling as though I just am less than. I feel guilty about I don't even know what. 
I feel guilty about I'm not doing the best I can. I should have did this better. I should have went to school for this. I should have made more money. I should have never gave that contract to somebody else. I should have given that song to somebody else. This is not working out well for me. I feel irritable, angry. I am snapping off on everybody. I'm snapping off on my partner. I'm snapping off on my kids. I am just, I'm just not feeling my best. I don't feel as though I am the best in my field anymore. As a matter of fact, I feel like I shouldn't even be doing this anymore. I feel like I shouldn't be here. Not necessarily that I want to exactly kill myself, but if I wasn't here anymore, nobody would miss me. I don't feel like I want to do this anymore. I feel like whoever has wronged me, I would like to do something to them. I'm feeling really hostile. I'm feeling negative inside. Physical signs. I feel achy, like I have a cold, like I have the flu, my body aches. Do I have arthritis? Is it raining outside? Because, you know, sometimes our grandma says what? When it's raining. When it's raining, my knee hurts. Yeah, yeah. My elbow hurts. <laughs> right. I have a headache all the time. It just comes and goes. It comes and goes. I feel my stomach is uh, diarrhea, constipation. I don't know which way is up anymore. Sometimes I have a twitch in my eye or or my lip, it just comes and goes for no reason at all. Um, sometimes my hair, it gets it gets in the shower and it gets thin when I wash it. Um, I feel dizzy, I feel lightheaded, and it just comes out of the blue. I'm walking down the street on, on Pittsburgh and, and all of a sudden I just feel a little woozy. I feel nauseous. Sometimes I even throw up and I don't know even where it's coming from. Um, these are certain signs of depression that can come up and you don't know really where it's coming from, your relationships, you have problem in those relationships. And your person is like, you are really tripping. Your mother's like, why are you acting so differently? Other times it's all of a sudden you get a high. You know what, all of a sudden your grades are getting good and your music is on pop and it comes out of nowhere and you're writing hits and you're cleaning up your room and your house is spectacular, you're inviting guests over and it comes out of nowhere and then Suddenly, the person that you knew so well may not be here anymore. Maybe they got into a one-car accident. Maybe they're getting high, you know, smoking weed, whatever you do, and now they're not here anymore because they took an overdose. And you wonder, they were doing so good for this past week. They were doing so good. Everything was great. They, they, they gave me good stuff. They gave me, you know, all their jewelry. And they was like, ah, oh, they get new. Because they had decided mm. that on that particular time, they had made peace with their higher power. Right. And so everything was positive in their life, and now they're going to go now. And that's why things had turned around. Because of depression, they had settled it. I'm going out of here. And so those are the signs of depression. Now, if, if someone out there watching us is feeling these signs, where could they get help from? Because to, to this thing here is to point out these things, and then the, we, we, we want to identify the problems. But I don't believe in having problems without solutions. So let's talk about some solutions to these things. So talk, I'm going to stay right there with you because you gave us a, a plethora of things. Yes. Of, so now let's talk about how we can get some solutions to exactly what you just described. So there is a number that people can call, and it's the National Suicide Hotline. And I believe the number, please don't call me, 1-800-TALK. Um, 1-800, it's the National Suicide Hotline number. Um, and I think... Montreal is going to yeah. it right now. Yeah. It's in Spanish and English, and you can also text that number. There's a place here in Milwaukee, um, and that is Black Space. We give free therapeutic experiences here, one for black and brown women, one for black and brown men, and one for the black and brown LGBTQIA plus community. There's also Mira with Montreal. There's also Amri with Ms. Lakia here, Dr. Lakia Jones. There is also our wonderful, beautiful head nurse here, Ms. Lauren. Um, there are several, 211 here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that you can call and they will give you help immediately. Also, FQHCs, Federally Qualified Health Centers. These are for people who may not have a lot of money or who may be afraid to spend insurance. Let's say if you are under your mom and dad's care and you may not want that information out there, which please don't be afraid. 
because mom, dad, aunt, uncle, whomever, they will be more than willing to help you. Absolutely. Please go to your insurance provider. Look on the back of that card and call that 1-800 number to your insurance provider and say, hey, I need some mental health treatment. If you are worth your weight in gold, you will check that box and say, yes, I am an insurance provider. And I provide talks, insurance, I provide services for those who are dealing with depression and anxiety. I am a provider who can help someone who's black, someone who's white, someone who's tall, someone who's short, someone who speaks Spanish, someone who is Asian, what have you. And you can find the provider of your choice. Also, calling 211, you can get those services. Federally qualified health insurance, health centers, I'm sorry. They will help those who don't have insurance, who are in sliding scale fees, or who don't have money at all. They will not turn their back on you. There's a 16th Street Clinic, and that is for those who um, are Spanish speaking, those who may live on the South Side, um, those who are Latinx, and all the above, white, black, um, Asian, Indian, you name it. Also, there's Progressive um, in the Hillside area, Washington Park area, so on and so forth. Um, there are several others, but FQHCs, write that down, who are for those who may not have insurance. There are others, and I can pass the mic down on those. Absolutely. Macho, you got that number for us? Uh, it is 1-800-273-TALK. 1-800-273-TALK. If you need it, call it. Also, for the LGBTQIA community, you can look at the Trevor Project. That is also a really good hotline. Also, Diverse and Resilient here in Milwaukee, they're also an advocate for LGBTQIA plus communities. You can walk right in their door. It's on Humboldt. I'll pass the mic around if you'd like any more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ms. Hubbard, talk to us. Uh, sure. That, those were a lot of amazing resources. Um, so I'll think to add on to that. Um, for the National Suicide Lifeline, I want to drop that as of July 16th, I believe is the date of this year, that number will get a lot shorter. So it will be going to a three-digit number, 988, which is a lot easier for folks in mental health and suicide crisis to memorize. Um, and it may already be active on your carrier, but for federally and across the nation, in July of this year, 988 will go live. And that's the national number that individuals can call, text, or chat. Um, for mental health support and connection to resources. And these are free. Absolutely free. We like free stuff. Yep. Yeah. I got some free chicken the yeah. other day. I got a free cookie. Well, you can yeah. get free mental health help because this right here keeps you alive. That chicken ain't going to put <laughs> grease in your arteries and your, you know, but that's another story. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep and going. this resource could potentially be anonymous if you so choose. So Absolutely. for people who may not be ready yet um, to acknowledge that they may be struggling with something, dealing with stigma. So 988 coming soon this summer. Um, locally, I also add that Milwaukee County has a crisis line, 24-7 mental health crisis line that people can call. We're not quite up on text and, text and chat yet, um, but we do have that phone line available 24-7, and the number is 414-257-7222, where we can get access to resources and mental health professionals. And by calling that number, mental health clinicians will be dispatched out to community members wherever they are, at your house, at your church, at the George Webb, um, wherever it might be, in order to engage with you, uh, seek to stabilize whatever crisis might be going on and help connect to resources. Not just county resources, but whatever resources is best for that person and to make a person-centered plan. And I think that's important because a lot of times when you see people that have mental health issues, y'all want to call the police. Yeah. Police don't know what the hell to do. Let me just tell you that as a black man who got to deal with police. They don't know what to do. Yeah. Don't call the police. Call these people because it would be a lot less people dead if y'all call these type of people than the police because the police are not trained to help mental health. They don't know how to help their own mental health sometimes. No disrespect to the police. I love police. Shout out to y'all. <laughs> y'all got a tough job, but they are not mental health experts. Yeah. So what you need to do is deal with mental health with a mental health expert, yep. not a cop. You know what I'm saying? Just, that's just. So if you see this, please also use this information to help somebody else because we want people to live through their mental health. All right? I, our local law enforcement would say the same thing. Absolutely. Um, off that same note, we partner with them. Yep. So for the calls that may end up 2911, for people who don't know another number or can't remember another number to call, 
um, do many hours of the day and even on weekends, especially in the city of Milwaukee, the county provides clinicians. Mm -hmm. So we do co-respond with officers to mental health uh, scenes. We help to de-escalate. We help to give other options aside from arrest or emergency detention. So in case you can't remember any of those other numbers, in the city of Milwaukee, West Dallas, and now with the Sheriff's Department, we are partnered to provide mental health resources and hoping to expand our service hours for when people truly are in need. Um, the last couple things I'll add from the county's perspective are several walk-in clinics that we have co-located with those community health centers or FQHCs. Um, so you can walk in free. You don't have to have insurance. It's underinsured, uninsured individuals. We're co-located in 16th Street off of 16th and National. We're also off of 2nd and Capitol with Outreach Community Health Center. And in the next Hopefully the next several months by the end of summer, we look to partner also with Milwaukee Health Services on the north side um, off of 82nd and Silver Spring to provide crisis walk-in clinics for adults. You can have mental health assessment, access to prescribers, um, if not same day, next day. Mm -hmm. Peer services where you can receive support from persons with lived experience that can really help engage and walk you through where recovery can look like. Um, and those are just a few of the services aside from our mental health emergency room. Mm. Um, that you can go to. Currently, it's out on Watertown Plank Road, and at the end of uh, September 6th, is due to open up a new mental health emergency center off of 12th and Walnut, which will be great, closer to the community. To, yeah. uh, for adults, youth, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your ability to pay or insure it, so you can walk right into that mental health emergency center to um, be evaluated, receive services and connections as well. And I think this is important to know. The reason why I did this is because I want everyone to know, I know my struggle as a musician coming up trying to be the biggest producer in the world. Um, I wish I had somebody to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Like, a conversation can go a long way. You know what I mean? So the reason why we're doing this is to make sure that you understand that because in the way the insurance is set up nowadays, you can have insurance and it still won't work sometimes. So I want to make sure that you know that you can get the help you need with, if you don't have one dime in your pocket yeah. because a lot of times we don't get help for things, medical, things or whatever, we don't get the help because we think it costs too much. I don't want to pay $50,000 to get help. It either, you know, like the things of that nature when realistically the help is free. And I think it's extremely important. That, that was my main reason for doing this is so that we know that we can get help for zero dollars because a lot of times people take their lives thinking they can't get help because they don't want to put their family in debt. And that's just not the case. You know what I'm saying? That's an important, important, very important thing. Dr. Jones, talk to us about anxiety. Give me the difference between anxiety or being nervous or being, you know, just give me, give me, give me, hit me, hit me off with some tips or symptoms of anxiety. Anxiety. Oh, you know, anxiety can feel so different in, in different people. So I do want to put that out there because many times when we, we talked about comparing, right, to each other, so we want to be careful with that. But um, many times anxiety can feel like different things. One is... Um, nervousness, but extreme nervousness. And I think there's a big difference between, you know, just feeling a little anxiety and it being an issue, more of a mental health issue, right? Something you can't control where you might need additional assistance to, to, um, to work on that. But a lot of nervousness, um, sometimes it coincides with some of the symptoms with depression. So lack of sleep, right? So you find yourself not being able to sleep, not being able to focus in school, focus on work. Um, maybe you find yourself not being as attentive to people like you have before. You might find yourself even isolating at times when you normally don't isolate. Um, there are so many different things that um, when you think about anxiety. Now, there is good anxiety and there's bad anxiety, right? So something good is happening in your life that's good anxiety. It may not feel good sometimes because you're like, well, what's wrong? Why can't I sleep? Like things are going good in my life right now. Right? Why can't I sleep? I deal with good anxiety a lot because I tend to focus my life around positive people, things that are going on positive, not, not meaning that I don't go through bad things, but I feel that positive anxiety often. And that positive anxiety is what keeps you up at night sometimes, right? And you can't sleep. You're writing down those thoughts, those ideas, um, the next step, the next move, you know, what you want to do, or you're excited about something that's happening in your life. But really, it's, um, it's that really uneasy feeling. For some people, it's excessive sweating. Um, it could be, um, and there's just a lot. There's, there's a lot. But if you feel like that what you're experiencing is affecting your everyday life, right? So you're like, 
I, I know I'm feeling anxiety, but this is getting a little bit out of control. It's something that I can't control at this point. That's when you really want to think about reaching out to a mental health therapist to, to talk about it, to see, is this normal? Is this not normal? And it's hard to answer some of these questions because they really are a case-by-case -case situation. Absolutely. It's individualized. So one person may be feeling a high level of anxiety, um, but you might be able to control that anxiety, right? through some deep breathing exercises. You may be able to do yoga. You might listen to music. Music is very therapeutic. Um, there's other things that you might have. You might work out. So you might have different regimens and things that you can do, and that's, that's good. You recognize that there's some anxiety there, and you can control it. But where a mental health therapist can help is to help you control it when you can't control it on your own. Mm. It's coming up with different things to help you to um, manage that anxiety. Okay, so hopefully that answered the question. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So look, I got a question from the mm -hmm. somebody watching. Sure. They say, I'm an artist. I've been pursuing this thing for over seven years now, and I feel like my opportunity has slipped away. I've had suicidal thoughts in the past and got, received help. Is there, su is there a such thing as too much help, or am I just over-dramatizing this? Thank you for that question. And I'm also going to pass it to some of my colleagues up here, too, just to get some input on that um, to, or to provide some additional assistance. There's never such a such thing, at least I think there's not a such thing, of getting too much help. Yes. One thing we don't realize is that help and recovery and mental health is a process. It's a process. So you think about the journey, right? You think about from where you were as a young child to now. That's a journey. So things are going to happen in your life throughout that time. You're going to seek help from people. There will be times that different things are, are happening in your life. And um, you have to allow yourself some grace, some patience to be able to get through some of the things that you're experiencing. For that person out there that feels like, you know, um, it hasn't happened, maybe it just hasn't happened yet. Right? Have you ever thought that what you're dealing with or what you're going through is just a part of the process? Many people look at us up here and they say, oh, you know, they're professionals or they have doctorates or, um, you know, they, they have all this going on and that's great, but this didn't happen overnight. Absolutely. Right? We had many doubts. We had, you know, many fears. We, we failed forward. And I, I think I want to say that again. We failed forward yeah. <laughs> many of times, but we didn't give up. So I just want to, you know, to that person who wrote that, don't give up on yourself. And that's, that's what I hear, and I just want to make sure that that is not the case. Don't give up on yourself. It's not a, a matter of it didn't happen. It just didn't happen yet. Things are happening in your life. All of the work and effort that you're putting into is not in vain. Absolutely. It's not in vain. So every single day that you're, you're thinking about, well, why hasn't this happened to me? Why has happened to this other person but not me? Because it's your journey. And it goes back to what you said before. Don't compare yourself to other people's journey. Just give yourself some grace and allow yourself some time. I think that's great. I use an analogy to, because this is a music-based thing, but mm -hmm. this is for the community. So I use this analogy to all my writers, producers, artists, managers, etc. Mm -hmm. You're going to take a trip. You're flying to the destination. So you get on the plane. They say, they give you these uh, the announcements, you know. And one thing they say on there is that they say to you, um, if we uh, lose cabin pressure, there's a mass that comes down. And when the mass comes down, they don't say it in these terms, obviously, I'm not a, a flight attendant, but when the mass comes down, put your mask on first before assisting others. What they're telling you in this, now mind you, we're taking this trip. Put your mask on first before assisting others. You can't help someone else without helping yourself first. Absolutely. Right? So now that we know we're helping ourselves, now we get ready to head to our destination. Now, in our destination, we're flying from Milwaukee to London. Mm -hmm. We get over the ocean, and now we're getting ready in the area of where we're going to really land in Heathrow. That's the name of the airport in London. Heathrow in London. Now, we thought we were getting ready to land. So the pilot says, everybody put your seats, uh, book your, put your uh, tray tables up, and put your seats straight back, you know, mm -hmm. uh, straight up. We're getting ready to land. 
Now, you can feel the plane landing. So now this is you and your music career thinking you about to be the biggest songwriter, producer, artist, whatever. But then you feel the plane rise back up. You thought you were going to hit your destination. But something, the pilot got word that you can't land yet. This is that point in your career where you thought you were getting ready to hit your big mark, you about to get that big check, mm -hmm. and it did not happen. Yeah. So now, because of inclement weather, meaning it's storming outside, we can't land, which means there are situations that's going on in your life that for some reason, you're not ready for what's getting ready to happen to Love you. It. So what, whatever you believe in, I'm gonna use God because that's how I grew up. So I'm gonna say God, so you say universe, Allah, Buddha, whatever, that entity, it's saying, you're not ready. We got some more preparation before you land at your destination. So what happens when you're on a plane? Now, this happened to me a lot because I fly a lot. A lot of times when it's inclement weather, you have to circle the perimeter right. and wait. Mm -hmm. you, and what this thing is called, I think it's brilliant. I don't know who thought of it, but this is brilliant. It's called a holding pattern, meaning you're sitting in this pattern waiting in order to land, right? So you're in this holding pattern. So in your career... You didn't get there yet because you're in the holding pattern. Now, what happens while you're in the holding pattern? A lot of times, the, the uh, flight attendants give you food and drinks to keep you patient, right? What the pilot is doing, who's guiding the plane, which is your career, because you are the pilot of your career, the pilot is finding coordinates and, and, and things of that nature to figure out when we land, what gate we're going to be at, and all these type of things. If, if we, uh, we were supposed to be at gate B3, now we're going to go to gate uh, D7, right. he's preparing to land. So what that says to me, if you're the pilot of your career, writer, producer, artist, etc., you have to prepare to land while you're in your holding pattern. So when you touch down at your destination, mm -hmm. you know which gate, meaning you know what your contracts look like. You know what I'm saying? You know when you get off where the baggage is, meaning when it's time to put out your album, you know who to market your stuff to. Things of that nature. So don't take to this, I'm talking specifically to this person because this hit me hard because I know what it's like to be you. You're in your holding pattern, my brother, my sister. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're preparing because you are the pilot of your career. Yes. So while you're spinning in that holding pattern, make sure you prepare because you never know when that tower is going to say, uh, it's time for you to land air whoever you are. Air Chad, Air Roper, my last name, you can land now. So make sure that you are preparing while you're in your holding pattern because you are the pilot. Do not crash that plane. You don't have to. Just prepare while you're circling. So I just want to give you that analogy because that's, to me, is an extremely important part of how what we've done in our careers. And our, all of our careers are different paths. Yeah. But we all were in holding patterns at some point in our lives or in our careers. But what we did, we, we, were, we were preparing while we were in our holding pattern. So make sure whoever you are out there that you are preparing while you're in your holding pattern. Y'all right, got that? Yeah. Cool. Chad, can I just add to that? Yes. It's on my heart to speak to this person. Um, the word dramatic really stuck out for me. And I just wanted to validate to whoever this person is that however you feel, you're having a real life experience. We all are. And they're all specific to us. So dismiss the word dramatic because it really does um, invalidate your feelings and invalidates your experience. That's very real to whoever that person is. Um, and it's adding to that stigma Absolutely. about that, how I feel, I could just dismiss it away or oh, it'll go away or I'm just doing too much. Um, and that really isn't person-centered. We wanna make sure that you are the center of your thoughts, that your healing, your health, your recovery, your ability to cope. Um, are the ceiling of the center of those thoughts and of whoever that person's intentions are. So your feelings are not dramatic. I agree with Dr. Jones. There's no such thing as too much help. Um, in fact, there's all types of help out there. Evidence is revealing so many different types of practices. Um, there's acupuncture. Maybe therapy isn't quite where you're ready to go yet. Um, I just learned about, was it Reiki? Oh, Reiki. So, mm -hmm. Yes, I learned about that earlier to, um, this week. So there's all different types of methods and different belief systems and things that could be for any person and whatever you believe in. So you're not dramatic and you should really seek as much help as you need in whatever fashions or forms it comes in. Absolutely. Doc, uh, Montreal, I'm about to call you Dr. Kane. Look at me. I'm about to, about to upgrade him right tonight. About to, he about to graduate tonight messing with me. <laughs> Montreal, uh, in your experiences dealing with the young people, because I, like I like to make sure, because we got a lot of young people that pay attention to us. So dealing with the young people, what are some things you do to help when you see, see trouble 
in a young person, when it, whether it's depressed, a depressive uh, type of vibe or anxiety, anxious anxiety type of vibe, what do you do when you're dealing with the young people? Because I don't need the parents and the guardians to understand maybe some things that can help them. So give them some game right quick. Definitely be accessible um, and ask questions. I use a format called uh, Fearless Feedback where we look at the spectrum of general and specific and negative and positive, right? Out of those four areas, there's only two that matters, specific positive and specific negative, right? So if we're providing some feedback and we're saying, hey, you don't smell so great, that kind of sucks. But if I was to say, man, I know you just had an amazing basketball game and them shoes is talking like a winner, then there's things that we could do to address those shoes, right? Absolutely. And so a lot of times I'm sharing with parents that the feedback that you may be giving may be a little over the top. It might be too general, right? Um, and then there's a format to having those conversations. Anxiety can come in a form of a conversation that looks like, Dr. Jones, I really need to talk to you. So now Dr. Jones is going to say, about what? Well, what happened? You know, the last time and this, there's a process that you go through that can make you anxious, right? So I like to use the three Ps, permission position and probe so the first thing is hey is it okay if we can have a conversation because and then is that cool this allows a person especially a young person to be like man you know i'm really tired i just had exams this week can we talk tomorrow morning it allows them to be the master of their faith the captain or so or the pilot in that holding pattern and then the next part is when it comes down to let's just say bad news i look at uh acknowledge align and assure so acknowledging what the young person is saying, sharing some form of an anecdote of how you can relate because a lot of times there's a gap, right? Oh, man, I think Will Smith was the one that said parents just don't understand. And then there's the part where you assure them that everything is going to be all right. And so when I look at those patterns, those are things that I personally use. But the number one thing that I tell people is be who you wish you had. Be exactly who you needed. Because sometimes there's a barrier that exists because we don't know, oh, I can talk to pops. I can talk to moms. I could talk to granny, you know, and in all actuality, it's like, no, nah, if I say that, they're going to kick me out. If I say that, you know, the expectations are going to, uh, if I don't go to school, they're going to think I'm a bum. Like, it's so many different things that a person could be thinking, but if you allow them to have that safe space to really communicate with you or uh, someone that's a trusted figure, a credible messenger in a community, a mentor, right, a mental health professional, you can have better outcomes for our young people, especially in this city. That's a beautiful thing, man. Give us those Give us those uh, things again. To Absolutely. For yeah. you guys at home. Yeah, one uh, more time. Permission, position, probe, and acknowledge, align, and assure. That's, that's, that's powerful, brother. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. Now, let's talk to uh, Ms. Hubbard. Ms. Hubbard, there is a crisis call that comes in. What's the... I'm, the reason why I'm asking you this because there are steps you take, but there could be a dumbed down version of steps that can be taken for someone that's right there in the home. So there's a crisis call. Miss Hubbard, uh, Jawan acting a fool, blah, 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 blah. We need somebody to come out right now. What are some steps you take? And then give me steps that the person in the vicinity can take. Yeah, so we receive calls like that all the time. Concerned family members, parents, community members calling on behalf of someone that is going through something, maybe not quite sure what it is or what I'm supposed to do about it. Um, I think the first thing is being available, being accessible, um, and working to not contribute to that crisis. That can mean a lot of different things. Every person is different. Every crisis situation is different, especially if we're talking about um, involving substances, which is also very real in our community, um, but a few simple basic things that I would say for the lay person um, to work at de-escalating crisis situations and supporting is listening, um, ensuring that you are not working to change the person's experience. I don't want to argue with somebody who tells me that the sky is purple. If the sky is purple and that is working for you today, then that is what we are going with, okay? Um, and then the other thing is uh, as you are going along and listening, paying attention, is making sure safety is always one of the first things that you're aiming for. Safety for that person, safety for yourself, um, as you may be waiting on additional resources or considering whether or not you can take that person um, for, for additional support or services. Um, but on the end of the crisis counselor, it again starts with listening, being welcoming and engaging, 
um, not using medical jargon, making sure that we're talking uh, with community members about things that they are seeing, hearing, feeling. The most important person thing also for a crisis worker is that the crisis is whatever the person says it is. Uh, it's not for me to tell you that that's not important, that you're being dramatic, that we're not coming out for that today. Um, and so as we work to triage what we can do, what's available, if you can get somewhere safer, faster than we can get there, we're gonna talk through those situations also. If it's necessary for safety, um, then we will work to connect you with emergency services and the appropriate ones for that response as well, making sure they have the right information too, um, so that they can go in informed. And if we can meet the law enforcement on the scene, we're there to do that as well too, to help assess, engage, and make sure that people can be safe. Gotcha. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So I hope you guys got that. Now I want to talk, Dr. Knox, I want to talk to our music community right now. Um, I'm sticking to this high, high, low, low thing because it's real. It's real, and, we're, and I'm not just saying music community, entertainment community. Um, you know, there was a young lady that, that was at a, we thought the world thought was at a high point. Um, Miss America, you know, she was on, you know, Entertainment Tonight, and all this. We, everybody who saw this young lady, beautiful, gorgeous young lady, was at a high point. We thought, but it was really a mask for being in the low, low. Yes. And we obviously knew what happened to the young lady. Um, how, what are some signs that people around you, so I'm the producer and this gentleman is my artist, if I see him, what are some things I could be looking for that may not be right, that give me signs of they're putting up, or, or, or are there signs that they're putting up a front um, that something's really not wrong? Like how, do, how can that be detected because a lot of times when you work in the music industry or acting or, or the entertainment industry, they're they they have managers or uh, best friend that's around all the time or things of that nature. So how can those people see and then inter interject in if, if uh, for lack of a better term, how can that be? So there are definitely signs, but signs are different in every person. Yes. The key factor is patterns. Noticing a change in someone's pattern of behavior is going to be the thing that you need to look for. So even when you first get to know a person, you know them, you love them, even if you know them since they were five and six years old, or you're their producer and you know your artist, and you've gotten to know them for the past few months or even a year or two, knowing and getting to know their patterns intentionally. Intention is everything because you love them and you know them and you know them, grow them. Now, you're noticing things different. So if the person is an upbeat person and they love to go out and they love to be around people, so on and so forth, now they're starting to isolate themselves. If they're a person that is an introvert and like to be by themselves, they like to read books, they like to play chess, they like to kind of be around their mom, but now they're like, YOLO, let's kick it, let's go. We are out on Water Street, we are kicking it. And you're like, oh, that's different. You're thinking, oh, they just like to go out and have fun. Nah, that, that's odd, right? But a difference in their pattern, usually the opposite or a little bit opposite of what they like to do. So generally you'll notice patterns of um, isolating themselves from others perhaps, eating more or less, so appetite changes, sleeping more or less or disruptive sleep, weight gain or weight loss, um, feeling very jittery, Nervous, maybe patterns of suspicion, someone's looking at me, talking about me. You'll definitely see signs in social media interaction, and a lot of people will put it out there on social media. Raise your hand if you've seen someone on social media, and you're like, man, they're telling all their business. Mm -hmm. And you're like, whoa, they're just attention seeking. Don't say that, look into it a bit deeper. Or you'll notice someone completely X out of social media. I deleted all my social media. That's very important to look at. You'll also notice change in music choices, or you'll notice risky behavior. I'm driving 50, 70, 80, 90, 100 miles an hour down the street when it's a 25 mile an hour zone. You'll notice excessive drug use, alcohol use, um, different type of drug use. Um, you'll notice hypersexual behavior. I'm just sleeping with everybody. No condoms, no nothing, no protection. Um, I'm, I'm in a zone where even if you're talking to me, you're like, you know, I'm good. Favorite saying, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. 
Um, these are some of the signs I mentioned earlier. I wasn't doing so well before, I'm just here, and now I'm like, everything is improving 100%. And you're like, this isn't even that person usually, or I'm just under. And so these are some of the signs, change in pattern. So how does, how am I as the producer helping the artist when I see the change? What, 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 what are my next steps to help them because I see the change? Directive and straightforward. We've been taught in our society to be like, oh, I'm just going to view it and see it and maybe talk to their mom about it or maybe talk to their colleague about it. You, as a producer, hey, Scott, man, listen, come talk to me for a minute. You know what? I love you to pieces, and I, I've noticed some changes, and I just want to talk with you about them because, you know, we, we're boys. So I've noticed A and B. Mm -hmm. Not punitive, not argumentative, not even negative. Mm -hmm. I've noticed some changes in your behavior, and I just wanted to talk with you about them. What's up, man? Can you tell me a little more about that? You see how I said, what's wrong? No. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? No. Can you tell me a little more about that? Hey, what's up? Tell, tell me what's going on with it. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of interested in like what, your change, what the change is about direct and if they've said some things on Facebook like I don't want to be here anymore I hate this life or whatever I just want to know have you thought about harming yourself or killing yourself lately because I love you and I would be devastated if that would happen absolutely period absolutely yeah because we that I'm sure there's some I you know entertainment people out there that's seen this firsthand so I want to make sure because the last thing you want to do is be the person saying I wish I would have did this. I, w I, I remember them saying this, and I wish I would have did that, and it, but it's, at this point, there's nothing you can do. So I, I really wanted to touch on that because I think that's extremely important because a lot of times, because we are not professionals, we see things, but we don't know how to respond to them, so we just brush it under the rug because you, a lot of times when you love someone, you don't want to offend them either. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You straightforward, and this goes for children, Adolescents, adults, and seniors, straight up with love. Absolutely, absolutely. That's beautiful. So look, in closing, because I think we've, we've, we've hit a lot, a lot, a lot of points. Let's talk about, can you give us, uh, Montreal, that suicide hotline number again, please, sir? That's 1-800-273-TALK. Also, if you were to go to www.housecallwi.com forward slash help, you'll find more information. You'll see some of the resources at Milwaukee County. Uh, you'll see a link over to Black Space. You'll see some information on MRI Family Services. And, of course, you'll see more information about our preventative tool, the Mirror app. Dr. Jones. Give us some information about you, how people can reach out to you if they need help, because I want, I want everybody to understand that help is available, because that's the key. Absolutely. Talk to us, Dr. Jones, about the help that they can receive from you. Absolutely. For, not, not, I know you charge. I ain't saying that, but the kind of help, <laughs> the kind of well, help if programs. somebody ain't got, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so when you say you charge, right, you got to keep your doors open, right? right. <laughs> but right. the reality is we, we, we do. We partner with Milwaukee County. We part, yes. partner with... Um, Comprehensive Community Services, we have lots of programs for funding. Absolutely. So we, again, want to really, really push the fact that you don't have to have money to seek services. Absolutely. Okay? Um, so we are located on 40th and Capitol here in Milwaukee. We're also located inside the Sherman Phoenix building. So if you guys are familiar with Sherman Phoenix, um, we are located in Kenosha. So we not only service um, locally here in Milwaukee, but we try to definitely make sure we're hitting surrounding areas, right? Because many of us, our families and friends are in surrounding areas. Um, but you can definitely contact us via email. Um, and that's just clinic at amricounseling.com. You can go to our website, www.amricounseling.com. That's Spell spelled A-M-R-I. Yeah. Counseling. People call it a mirror counseling. Yeah, they yeah. say, uh, they say all type of names. We just answer to all of it. So it doesn't matter what you call us. Just call us. Right. Um, we can be reached uh, via phone as well. Four one four four five five three eight seven nine. We've been in the community for over sixteen years providing services. I've been providing services well over twenty five years. So I'm not going to tell you our age. You don't look a day but, over thirteen, girl. Stop lying. But, Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't feel a day over 13 either. But uh, but I will say that we are here for you. We have a number of therapists. Um, our staff is very diverse. We have not only um, 
English speaking, Spanish speaking, Arabic speaking therapist and provide services seven days a week, even on the even the evenings and weekends. And I know that's a big deal because we got a lot of working people out there, but but a lot of resources. We're here to support you. Um, Again, you can reach us directly. If you have any questions, my personal extension is 801 to that number that I provided, 455-3879, extension 801. I don't mind meeting with you and answering any questions before you decide to move forward with counseling if you think that is something that's needed. That's a beautiful thing, man. You said She said she got 25 years in the game, and she's 22. How she do that? See what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Dr. <Chad. laughs> Dr. Knox, talk to us about help that you can provide for, for the people out here because be, I want to make sure that we got all extensions all everything so that people know how serious that we here at Amplify are about making sure that people that may need the help can get it absolutely so like um, Dr. Jones here I also am a child prodigy I've been in the game for 25 plus years so you can look at Black Space HQ Black Space HQ www.blackspacehq we offer free um, therapeutic experiences for the black and brown community black and brown men women and the lgbtqia community um, we offer those groups every quarter at the milwaukee art museum now from 5 to 7 p.m so after the school day is over after you get the kids settled in after work we are there because we provide beautiful and safe spaces in the most wonderful places where we think that we don't belong that's where we are talking about our experiences and also giving strategies and techniques to take care of your mental wellness so please get a hold of us online you can register for those free seats and we are right there and we make sure that you're taken care of also with knox behavioral health solutions and my number 414 um, 214-0224, and we make sure to get into your communities, into your organizations and corporations to talk about mental wellness because that should be the keystone of your cultural competency and diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. So that's what we do so that even at work, you are well taken care of and your C-suite executives and middle management are able to provide that service for you. So please, take advantage of all these numbers. I partnered with Dr. Jones. I sent everybody I know to her and I know she is tired of people saying, Dr. Knox sent me because she is well versed in what she does. Mira, I make sure to shout him out every single way. And now that I know my beautiful Lauren, I will make sure, and I already do, but now that I know her personally, to send her that way. So thank you very much and please utilize all these resources. And my sister Lauren, talk to us about if we need help, yeah. what we can do. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just one very small part of an incredible team. Um, the work is really done by the clinicians, nurses, and um, psychologists that are a part of our mobile teams. So the one number, if you don't remember anything else from me today, is to call the crisis line. Any Milwaukee County resident can call 24-7, free of charge. You don't even have to tell us who you are to talk about whatever's going on, to ask questions if you're not sure. If you want one of these numbers or email addresses that you didn't write down fast enough or can't go back to, call us for that too. And we really just are a support and a resource network that will come to you between uh, 7.30 and midnight right now. So we're working on being truly 24-7 in the community, but that phone line is available locally. And we have people who really care and are a part of this community, um, diverse clinicians and therapists who are ready to be able to support you, answer those phone calls, and come out to see you wherever you are. You can call for yourself, your family member, your artist, um, or whoever it might be that you're concerned about. And give us that number one more time, please. 414-257-7222. It's Milwaukee County Crisis Line. That's it. So listen, I know this was a different vibe for Amplifier, you know what I mean? But to me, we can't have the big artists if we don't have mentally stable big artists. We can't have the next big producer if their mental health isn't well. We can't have the next big actor or actress. And we've seen things happen, some of the biggest stars, even on Oscars and stuff like that. Yeah. If mental health is not in the forefront, and my goal is not to just affect how you write the song, how you compose the song, but how you're doing after the song is out. And it did what it was supposed to do, or it didn't do nothing at all. My goal here 
and amplifiers to make sure that I'm helping you on the business side. But first and foremost, you can't do business if you're not mentally stable. You'll make, I always say to all my clients or writers and producers that I have, I'll say, we never do business with emotions. But you won't know how to do that if you don't know how to control your emotions. And this mental health thing is an ex extremely important thing. And I feel like everybody should make sure that they put that to the forefront. You'll go to the gym. You'll work out to get buff. You'll do 100,000 push-ups. You'll run 487 million miles. But one thing you can't do is you can't take your brain out your head and put it on the treadmill and let it work out. You got to talk to somebody to work that brain out. So I'm here. The amplifiers here. 88.9 is here to make sure that you have more than enough resources to make sure you get that brain, those same workout, you get those biceps, those triceps, and those glutes. So thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thank you so much for those who came out. You didn't have to do it. You could have been anywhere else, but you right here with us. And I just want to say thank you to my esteemed guests, Ms. Hubbard, Dr. Knox, Dr. Jones, and Brother Kane. Thank you so much for coming. This was an amazing thing. This, to me, this is one of the most important things we've had this year. And we got big things coming, but this was more important than any, anything that we got coming or anything that we had because you can't do anything if you're not healthy. And the, everything starts in the mind. If people talk about manifestation, you can't manifest nothing if your mind ain't on point. All right? So thank you guys for joining us, and I appreciate y'all. Peace and love. And always remember, in everything you do, make sure you do it to the best of your ability. And one thing about a dream is that it never expires. All right? Thank you.